In order to do more sophisticated plotting, I am going to have to use um, some of the other objects that are defined by PyPlot. PyPlot defines an object type called figure, and this uh, essentially is an object for the entire graphic that we are creating. And what we can do with figures is to break them up into multiple subplots. So in the, the um, pandas plots, we saw that there was an option to include multiple subplots, but we didn't really have very granular control over what was going to go into those subplots. They were basically created automatically. Using um, PyPlot, we can control exactly what gets put into each of those subplots. One of the things that is a little confusing if you start reading through the documentation is that the subplots are referred to as axes, and axes essentially mean subplots, and it does not mean the usual meaning that we have for axes, which is several axes of a plot. Um, the reason why I mention this is that uh, a lot of times the the subplot objects which we uh, which are created are given the uh, name some variation on the name AX. So if you read um, online documentation and you see AX, you can generally assume that they are talking about subplots within a figure. The subplots that we generate can be organized in rows and columns. Uh, and we can specify how many rows and columns of subplots that we want. Um, we can then generate, after we specify that, we can then uh, control what goes in those manually, but we can also create um, a number of rows and co columns of subplots in mass, and uh, when we do that, um, those subplots are actually in an array. So, um, we can loop through those arrays and handle them programmatically. So if you had, say, a figure that had 50 subplots, you could use code to control what goes into those 50 subplots instead of having to type 50 separate lines and describe what is going to happen over and over again. So this is a powerful feature of subplots. Uh, we won't be making a lot of use of it because it's a more advanced feature. So let's go back and take a look at what happens if we create figures and subplots. So I'm gonna start by instantiating a figure object using this statement here. And then I will create two, sub, two empty subplots so that you can see how the format of the add subplot method works. The first number, the first argument of the add subplot, add subplot method is the number of rows, and the second is the number of columns. And then the third argument uh, specifies which of the subplots we are adding. So this, in this case, we are instantiating a subplot called axes one, which is going to be the first one in the series of subplots, and axes two is gonna be the second one in the series of subplots. So if we run this, we'll see um, basically we've just created two sets of um, empty subplots. If I reverse the order of the first two um, arguments in the subplot, the add subplot method, then I will get two rows and one column instead of uh, two columns and one row. So we can go ahead and do this. Um, you may wonder why I've included this command uh, plot show. This is actually unnecessary if you're using Jupyter Notebooks because by default, the Jupyter Notebook will show you the figures uh, as you create them. But if you're using a different environment, um, like running it from the command line, then the show method causes a window to pop up and show you the um, figure and its subplots and give you a chance to interact with it. Um, but for the Jupyter Notebooks, we will omit this. If you were going to use code like this in a standalone script that was not part of a Jupyter Notebook, you would need to use the show method in order to make that show up. So now let's go ahead and populate um, some 
of these subplots with actual data. So the first part of the code is the same as what I had before. Now you may be wondering, why do I need to put this code in here again when I already ran it in this cell up here? And the answer is that when you're using plots in Jupyter Notebooks, the plots get reset every time you switch cells. So you need to have the code relating to a particular plot um, or setting the um, characteristics of that plot within a single cell. That does not mean that all of the code you use to generate the plot has to be in that cell. So for example, creating the data frames and manipulating them into the, uh, uh, wrangling them into the form you want can be in other cells. But once you actually instantiate the figure and start creating subplots and putting content into them, that is the code that has to be in a single cell. So after I create um, my subplot called axes one and axes two, now I can perform plot operations on them. So the, uh, you'll see that the syntax of this plot method is basically the same thing that I used in the plot function before. I put the, um, the x variable, then a comma, then the y variable, and then I can control the color, the line style, and what kind of markers. Since I'm creating two different subplots here, um, it might be nice to use different colors. So for the subplot on axes one, I'm going to use black, but for the other subplot, I'm going to use red, and I'll also use a different marker type. So if we run this code, we can see what the results look like. So here I can see I have um, cases and deaths, and um, it has provide, uh, provided different scales for the y-axis based on the maximum values in the two subplots, but it has by default used the same x-axis uh, for both of them. Uh, it's not really uh, dealing with these as, um, as date objects. It's simply putting them in as ordered strings, but for this application that is probably fine.